Kushner's questionable business dealings with foreign partners are getting some renewed scrutiny as we inch closer to the general election and the possibility of Trump winning reelection and potentially having Jared Kushner, his son in law, serve as a senior advisor again. Now, as a former advisor to Trump, particularly in the area of the Middle East, an area that he really had no expertise in, but nonetheless, Kushner built some relationships with foreign partners that he, you know, took advantage of after he left the White House. And how did he take advantage of it? Well, with all sorts of business deals that were incredibly lucrative. So, for instance, his $3 billion fund, Affinity Partners, is financed almost entirely from overseas investors he worked with when he served as a senior advisor in the Trump White House. And if Trump becomes president again, Kushner could wield significant influence over foreign and economic policy, despite his clear conflicts of interest. Now, he's taken money from government wealth funds in Saudi Arabia, which by the way, gave him $2 billion right after he left office. Then there was Qatar, they've also provided some money to Kushner and the UAE, as well as Terry Gao or Gu, that's the founder of a Taiwan based electronics manufacturer. You may have heard of them. It's known as Foxconn. Foxconn got a lot of backlash, or I should say, Apple got a lot of backlash several years ago after the working conditions at the Foxconn factory in China were called into question. Now, in total, 99% of the money placed with Kushner by investors has come from foreign sources, according to a filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission in late March. Kushner's firm, Affinity Partners, which I had mentioned earlier, is collecting approximately $40 million a year in management fees from those investors, even before any share of profits earned on investments. He has made 10 investments to date, totaling $1.2 billion, many of them in companies based abroad. And if you're wondering what those investments are, well, we've got the details. So let's get to the next graphic where it shows that the investments include stakes in Shlomo Group, an Israeli car leasing and financing company, Dabizzle. <laughs> I mean, come on, the Bizzle Group in Dubai, it's a Dubai based online real estate site. EGYM, a Munich based electronic fitness company, ZAMP, an Abu Dhabi backed fast food company that operates more than 1000 restaurants in Brazil. So those are just some of the investments with lots of fun company names involved. But Jake, thoughts? Uh, do Bizzle for shizzle. Pausing here to deliver some honest truth as we do in our news coverage as well. TYT is facing challenges, guys, as the entire industry is. You know who could make the difference? You. If you hit the join button below, it's gonna make all the difference and keep us in business. We appreciate you, thank you. So look, guys, this is so clear cut and it goes back to the point that Anna started with. So when you've got somebody who's not taking $5 million from a Ukrainian gas company or making $500,000 from BS Modern Art, but instead getting $2 billion from governments he just had relationships with when he was in office, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, UAE, etc. And by the way, one of the most notorious companies in China. And that's not an issue, 5 million is an issue, but 2 billion is not an issue, 2 billion. And so I've said this many times based on reporting, Intercept and others. Kushner went over to meet with Mohammed bin Salman, the butcher of Riyadh, after he'd already dismembered an American journalist. And magically, a lot of our sources wound up getting arrested right after Kushner left. And Mohammed bin Salman seized power through that. And then after what appeared to be a giant favor to Mohammed bin Salman, specifically by Jared Kushner. By the way, the Saudis actual investment company, they have one, said do not invest with Jared Kushner. He does not have a good enough track record to justify any investment, let alone $2 billion. And Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince said, go away, we're investing with Jared Kushner no matter what. Jared so Kushner, by the way, is a fool in business terms. So he still says to this day, you invest at the top of the market. No, you don't. I mean, has anybody ever heard Warren Buffett say buy low, sell high? It's not complicated, right? It's very hard to do sometimes because you don't know where the market's gonna go. But this moron thinks you buy high. 
And so that's what he did with 666 Fifth Avenue, the biggest real estate failure in American history. Yeah. I'm not joking. And I'm not exaggerating, you could look it up. And that was Jared Kushner. And look, Jared Kushner being a bad investor or a, a businessman with terrible uh, instincts is something I don't care about, okay? Let him fail, it's none of my business. I don't care about that at all. What I do care about though, is when these conflicts of interest arise within our government and end up dictating policy that impacts all of us. And when it comes to foreign policy, obviously impacts people in other countries as well. So that's really the question here, right? Now, if Jared Kushner was a private citizen, if he had not made these relationships or these partnerships while he was serving as a senior advisor to Donald Trump in the White House, then it wouldn't be an issue, right? As a private citizen, you do you boo, if you can secure some foreign investors, that is your right, there's no problem with that. But when you create these partnerships in office and then cash in on those partnerships later, the real question is, well, what kind of promises were made? What kind of promises were kept? Right? What kind of favors did Kushner carry out on behalf of these foreign governments or these foreign investors, I should say, who provide money, who provided money to him and his investment fund? That's the real question here. So the reason why I bring up that he's a terrible businessman is not because ha ha, but because that is not the type of guy with that track record to get a $2 billion investment. Getting that amount of money is spectacularly difficult under normal circumstances. For a guy with an enormous track record of failure to get that money, it's just unprecedented. That's not a thing that happens unless there's politics involved here. And to that point, the second reason I brought it up is, guess who rescued the Kushner family when Jared nearly sunk his entire family's fortune on 666 Fifth Avenue? A Democrat, I don't know who. No, that's a good guess though, Qatar. Qatar came in and rescued that project. Gee, I wonder if it made a difference to Jared Kushner. And that was during when Trump was in office and Jared was in charge of our Middle East policy. I yeah. mean, guys, come on, if you're MAGA, if Hunter Biden did that, if Hunter Biden got a $2 billion deal after they left office. We'd be sitting oh, here come on this set condemning it Yeah, because right is right, wrong is wrong. I don't, look, I, I don't care about party, politics, okay? I care about right and wrong. So if Democrats are engaging in shady business deals, it should be called out. But again, I mean, look, people like James Comer, Representative James Comer have had quite a bit of time to prove that the uh, the Bidens were peddling influence in order to secure tens of millions of dollars in business deals. We've been waiting for the evidence, we haven't seen evidence. But what's interesting is just last year, that very same individual, James Comer admitted, and this is a direct quote, what Kushner did cross the line of ethics, and that's regarding the Saudi funding of Kushner's investment firm. That's Comer who said that. Yeah, so why aren't there investigations? And by the way, Democrats are the worst. You had the House and the Senate for two years. Why didn't you investigate the guy? Because guys, the number one thing I care about is that trip that he took to Saudi Arabia. Like I said, the Intercept had really good reporting on it. But is it definitive that he sold out our sources, some of which whom were tortured, some of whom were killed after Kushner left? It's not definitive. I'm telling you that, that that's the timeline of events, but we don't know that Kushner said, here's our sources, go get them, round them up, etc. But you know who does, who probably has a pretty good idea? Intelligence officers that were working on Saudi Arabia and knew our sources. So if you do hearings and you subpoena people, you serve warrants, we might actually find out, did he or didn't he sell us out? Can I, let me mention one policy that really comes to mind. Remember, there was something pretty miraculous that happened in Congress when Trump was still in office. You had a bipartisan bill to end US involvement in Yemen, right? We were backing the Saudis in Yemen and fighting off you know, the uh, Iran-backed Houthi rebels. Okay, so Congress passes that resolution, Donald Trump immediately vetoes it, immediately. Was it because there was business dealings happening with Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabia didn't want the United States to pull its support? Is that a possibility? Come on right? guys. It brings these issues into question. 
these conflicts of issue, conflicts of interest are a problem, and it makes you question whether you know government officials are looking out for the best interests of Americans or if they're looking out for their own best interests by you know forging these business deals with foreign entities. And if you're going to say no, there's no way that Donald Trump and Jared Kushner changed their Saudi Arabia, Qatar policies, etc., based on money. You're really gonna say that out loud and expect us to keep a straight face that Donald Trump doesn't care about money, Jared Kushner doesn't care about money, they only have good intentions. So even though it looks super suspicious, we shouldn't even bother to investigate. Come on, you've gotta have some principles. So this is what Kushner's doing is absolutely outrageous. And if Trump gets back into office, God knows what they're gonna sell you know, out next time. And then next time maybe he gets $4 billion, $20 billion because this country's apparently for sale. And ironically from the guys who claim America first. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.